Thank you for being here. And I wish to thank the, the Omics International for giving me the opportunity to present my data. Um, my talk will start with a brief general introduction and then I will go through uh, the findings of my own research group, small research group, and uh, of my collaborators. This is a recent line of research of my group, but uh, I want to present you an innovative uh, source of mesenchymal cells, uh, useful maybe for um, ma regenerative medicine purposes. So during the last few decades, um, degenerative lesions of the musculoskeletal system have become increasingly common, leading to uh, socio-economical consequences and to an increased demand of medical services. The most frequent uh, lesions are um, osteoarthritis and bone fractures due to osteoporosis and osteopenia incidence in the aging population or to um, traumatic events or tumors tumors um, in, uh, that uh, occur in the younger population. And it has been calculated that um, over two million cases of skeletal defects each year require bone graft procedures to achieve union. And this, in fact, a bone is second only to blood for transplantation procedures. And this is uh, this implies, of course, socioeconomic consequences due to the patient's treatment and is a major concern both for USA and for Europe countries. Since this number is uh, expected to increase in the next few years due to the aging of the population. Um, current treatments, as we heard, uh, for skeletal defects uh, are, are based on autologous bone grafts that are taken from another side of the own body of the patient. Uh, generally, they are taken from the um, uh, posterior iliac crest and they are put inside the bone skeletal defect. Uh, alternatively to autologous bone grafts, allografts, can be used, uh, obtained from cadavers or donors, uh, synthetic variants like metals and ceramics, or bone substitutes mm, obtained from different animal species. Among all these procedures, autologous bone grafts uh, have been, has been, uh, been for since long uh, the, the gold standard procedure, and it is still now as we listen to the first presentation of Professor Calori. Um, because they contain osteogenic cells and because they don't imply uh, the immu immune system rejection. But also autologous bone grafts uh, show some drawbacks and limiting factors due to the limited amount of extractable bone and due to the donor morbidity to the patient stress. So, this uh, provides a basis for tissue engineering um, approaches. And we listen to a number of different combinations between scaffolds and uh, cells and growth factors and peptides and to make a happy uh, bone regenerated. Um, so bone has been seen as a target for regeneration in spite of its high innate capability to repair uh, in fact, this is due to the presence of a number of resident cells like osteoprogenitor cells uh, that Evo is really good in characterizing uh, that lie in the periosteum or endosteum and the osteoblasts and osteocytes, osteoclasts that uh, remodel continuously bone or the stem cells arriving through the blood circulation due to the high vascularity of bone. So after injury, all these populations contribute to the healing uh, thanks to their proliferation and differentiation. So to imitate 
this bone in net repair capability. A graft should be should display some properties, the osteogenic ability due to the presence of cells, the osteoinductive ability due to the influence on the surrounding cells, and the osteoconductive ability due to the properties of the scaffold. So these are the ingredients to grow new bone, the cells, with their intercellular connections and the extracellular matrix, which is imitated by the 3D scaffold, which uh, enables cells to migrate and adhere and uh, to uh, go into differentiation or proliferation. So how to choose the cells? The ideal cell source should uh, not provide ethical issues, should be non-tumorigenic, not immunogenic, should be expandable till um, for a long time, so it should be highly proliferative, and should express protein similar to that of the tissue to be replaced. So with this in mind, the ideal cell source should be considered osteoblasts. But osteoblasts are much immature, relatively immature cells that can be harvested in a great amount from the grafts, and also they are not expandable so much into culture, and they require a lot of time. So the use of stem cells appears the most promising solution. And in our case, we uh, were interested in uh, this innovative cell source of mesenchymal stem cells, the uh, human amniotic fluid stem cells that have been recently characterized by the group of Professor Atala and Dr. Paolo De Coppi. Uh, they were able to demonstrate that these cells uh, are he heterogeneous population displaying also pluripotent cell markers. So they behave uh, between embryonic stem cells and uh, odal stem cells since they have the capability to um, be induced to differentiate into the different cell types deriving from the three different germ layers. And so they look like an innovative uh, source of cells for regenerative medicine purposes. Um, as you know, uh, mesenchymal cell, cell stem cells from the bone marrow have been used in used for long for a long time for cell transplantation. And more recently, a number of other non-embryonic stem cells have uh, been used, like um, mesenchymal cells from the fat tissue or umbilical cord tissue. In the case of amniotic fluid stem cells, they can be easily harvested uh, from the mm, a small amount of amniotic fluid that is taken, withdrawn uh, during amniocentesis, during the second trimester of pregnancy. The procedure is not so invasive, and the cells can be harvested by centrifugation and put into culture and expanded till mm, 250 population doublings. So um, these cells, we, we wanted to use these cells together with a natural scaffold, and we'll talk about the scaffold in a few slides, um, to assay their um, bone regeneration potential. And we, did, we subdivided the study into phases, into two phases. The first in vitro phase was done uh, in culture, in in vitro culture. Uh, and the second was done in vivo in uh, the rat model. Here you can see the morphological patterns of these heterogeneous population. Um, you can see uh, that there are mm, round cells and uh, more elongated cells. We classified these as epithelial-like cells and these as fibroblast-like cells, but sub substantially they don't differ um, except for the length. And uh, they, both of them show eukaryotic nuclei and nucle evident nucleoli, indicating that both of them are active, metabolically active cells. 
In fact, when they are mm, induced in, in vitro to differentiate towards the osteogenic, adipogenic, and chondrogenic lineages with the commonly, commonly using techniques, both of them are able to differentiate and uh, to express typical markers of osteogenic lineage or the adipogenic lineage. So we, we also did uh, another uh, other phenotypic and proteomic characterization of these cells, of course. And then we had to choose the scaffold. Um, we read in the literature that uh, the ideal uh, scaffold should, have, should be stable and not reabsorbable rapidly, should uptake rapidly fluids containing growth factors and whatever, and should display a network of uh, pores of different measure, a different size, and to uh, allow cells to migrate and adhere and uh, to grow to, to let also vessels to to grow. And we chose a natural scaffold uh, made uh, by a Swiss company, already used uh, in the a clinical practice. The name is Orthos by Geistlich. It is a natural hydroxyapatite obtained with a patented uh, chemical procedure to uh, deproteinize bovine bone to eliminate all the organic components, including cells. And uh, here you can see the structure, the trabecular structure of this uh, scaffold, which is quite similar to that of uh, human bone. And the interconnecting pores of different size that are present inside the trabecular structure uh, that is uh, a good uh, factor that promotes uh, vessel in growth and uh, cell migration. In fact, uh, the orthopedic surgeons asked us to evaluate this particular uh, scaffold in our in vitro and basic sciences studies. Uh, but they used this for since a long time uh, for to treat bone defects after fracture, after removal of metal implants, or so after osteotomy and whatever. And here you can see the comparison between the human bone structure and the orthos structure, the R scaffold, or other types of uh, uh, bovine bone, uh, sintered or synthetic hydroxyapatite that are completely different. So our experimental model, uh, the preclinical part of the study, was done on 15 Spragdoli rats of the same age and same weight and the orthopedic surgeons made a full thickness gap of seven millimeter at the femoral diaphysis of one leg. And we subdivided the animals into three groups. The first group with uh, of untreated controls with only the lesion, the second group with the lesion treated with the only the scaffold, and the third group with the scaffold plus cells. Three weeks later, we looked at the gross anatomy. And as you can see, in the, in the untreated control, the, le the lesion is still evident, whereas uh, both in the scaffold and the scaffold plus APCs, the lesion is not anymore there. Um, there is a continuity in this bone surface. And here, in the presence of, of the cells, there is a fibrous cap, ex an exorbitant and very abundant. Histological observations confirmed gross anatomy. These are 2D reconstructions of representative samples. Here, the, the lesion is uh, masked by muscle tissue. Here, the lesion is evident, and but contains new f newly formed tissue. And here, you can see the abundant fibrotic reaction in the presence of the cells. Then, since we are histologists, we mm, went on with the uh, without a staining and uh, we use the trichrome mallory staining to uh, identify the presence of newly mineralized areas uh, they are these blue areas and red areas 
the different color is due to the different concentration in calcium. And here you can recognize the scaffold with inside a blue area. And here in the presence of the cells, you can recognize a number of young osteocytes just included into the newly mineralized uh, bone. And here in the scaffold treated typical osteoblast lining uh, a, tra a bone trabecula. Then after these qualitative observations, we move to the quantitation of, of these events. And we use the um, metamorph analysis system software. And we identified an osteogenic index by mm, counting the number, the average number of osteoblast lining trabeculae and as you can see in the graph below, uh, there is a significant difference between the two, the two groups considered, here considered. And in addition, we uh, found in the perilesional region the presence of mesenchymal-like connective tissue. And this is the scaffold treated sample, while besides Below uh, is the uh, human amniotic plus stem cells plus scaffold treated sample. And uh, here you can see that uh, there is a higher quantity of this material. Um, as you can see, at a higher magnification. And from the graph, that show the big difference between the, among the three groups. Then we wonder whether uh, um, these cells could, or the scaffold, could have promoted neovascularization. And uh, to tell the truth, we used uh, um, monoclonal antibody directed against the uh, anti von Willebrand factor, which is a marker of newly formed vessels. But we had a very high background, uh, and uh, who works uh, with the bone knows that it's a limiting factor. Um, so then we did anti-VEGF, immunohistochemistry, and also here we had a very high background, but we set the metamorph analysis software, we uh, increased the, the threshold to acquire images, and so we acquired only the darkest brown areas, and as you can see in the morphometry, uh, you can see that the, there is a progressive increase from the lesion, the, the untreated samples towards the scaffold treated or scaffold plus FSCs in uh, uh, VEGF positivity of the matrix. And this is consistent, this was consistent with the, the histological observations of the presence uh, in the both in the scaffold or in the cells plus the scaffold of new vessels cavities. Then we wonder whether we were able to locate the transplanted cells, and to do this, we uh, pre-labeled cells with uh, this marker, which is a permeable cell stain uh, PKAH. 26, which is incorporated into the phospholipid B layer and uh, emits uh, red fluorescence. And uh, here uh, you can see that we were able to detect the presence of these fluorescent cells around, again, cavities, maybe vascular cavities. And also we had luck to identify nice nuclei with the uh, Questo non funziona più. Okay. Uh, they are indicated by the arrow, uh, only, of course, in the presence of the cells. So uh, the first conclusion is that uh, the rat femur bone defect showed the formation of uh, abundant fibrotic tissue and a woven bone and increased presence of blood vessels and still the presence of human amniotic fluid stem cells after three weeks. This is consist consistent with other papers published in the literature, demonstrating the capability of these cells to promote vascularization. 
Then, thanks to the collaboration with Dr. Ivo Kalajic, we wanted to um, ascertain whether our immune system was not involved in uh, mediating the fibrotic reaction. We already know that uh, in human amniotic fluids themselves are not immunogenic. They do not express HL, HLA-DR. But with immunodeficient mice, we could uh, exclude this hypothesis. And so uh, we uh, operated uh, mice at calvarial bone. Uh, there were, were did, we did two holes, one with the, with the uh, scaffold alone and the other one with the, I don't know, there is a pointer. C'è un pointer, alternate, scusi. Scusi, c'è un pointer? Eh, ma non funziona più. Uh, I don't know if you... Uh, the, the red line corresponds to the scaffold alone, the blue line corresponds to the scaffold plus cells. And uh, uh, these mice were sacrificed after six weeks, so later than the rat animals, and uh, were treated with another type of scaffold, another type of scaffold uh, containing also uh, collagen fibers. And here you can see the histological uh, sections demonstrating the, the thickness of the fibrotic response only when we added cells. And here there is a higher magnification demonstrating the presence of vessels again and uh, we were able to identify the cells thanks to the mm, transfections done in um, Evo's lab. Uh, they were transfected with the cherry positive uh, uh, ubiquitously expressing, emitting red fluorescence. And here you can see in this merge image the presence of these uh, orange dots uh, corresponding to the cells still uh, present after six weeks. So also in this model, we demonstrated that uh, AFACs are, are able to induce the production of uh, fibrous bone around the scaffold and uh, newly um, near, newly formed vessels. So this is the take home message. Uh, we believe that these cells uh, can engraft in a host bone and contribute to new bone and vessel formation, and so they can represent an alternative therapeutic strategy, maybe to autologous bone grafting procedures, when some issues will be, of course, uh, solved. Um, a number of open questions have arisen from this study uh, about the cell fate of the cells inside the bone, about the mechanisms of homing and uh, integration, and about the possible paracrine effects that you know uh, are more important, much important, because uh, we could also use a conditioned medium instead of the cells themselves. So my talk is finished, and I want to thank uh, the members of my small research group, mainly they are, they are mainly students, and uh, the colleagues from STEM Tech Group in Chieti, the orthopedic surgeons headed by Vincenzo Salini and the genetic unit uh, headed by Liborio Stupia, and last but not least, uh, the people from the Department of Reconstructive Sciences, University of Connected Health Center, USA, uh, Ivo Kalajic and Alexander Lickler for uh, the, the transgenic mice and for transfections, uh, cell transfections, and you all for your attention.